Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about, you know, the election and it is, you know, coming very fast. We are already in April, April 1st. And, you know, Biden isn't turning anything around. He's still making black Americans upset on a lot of things that he is doing. Case in point, you know, at first they tried to ignore, you know, our grievances with the Democrat party and Biden in particular, but now the mainstream media have to make it every single story. And I told you that they always paying attention to us, how we vote, how we move case in point. Let's look at this. Could Biden's problems with black voters help Trump win? Now the black community isn't the only community to have a problem with Biden, but yet we're the only people they pay attention to the supposedly insignificant 15% of the U S population, right? We are so insignificant, but yet they always making articles worrying about how we're voting. If we're not voting, whatever the case may be, we're going to go through this and let's, let's, let's really get into it. So they, of course they say more than 50 years, black voters have been the most loyal and reliable members of the Democrat party's coalition. And what have we gotten for that? Not a freaking thing. As a former uh, president, Donald Trump, you know, they could make significant inroads with these voters in November. Say some national polls suggest that it's possible, but should you believe the polls they're saying here? They say black voters are poised once again to play a critical role in the presidential election. President Biden needs every vote possible among these voters to secure a second term. And yet he don't act like it. Remember, he has prioritized everybody else over the black community. People that's foreign, people who come in as foreign nationals and talking about their economic migrants. Basically he prioritized them. He has prioritized the Asian community. He's prioritized LGBT. He's prioritized everything you could think of, you know, trans, it don't matter. He's prioritized. Them. Now, if Biden was smart, when he first got in, he should have prioritized black Americans then. But he says, well, I gave you Juneteenth and I gave you a Supreme court justice symbolism. Cause once again, we were celebrating Juneteenth every day of my life here in Texas. Right? So we didn't need that. We didn't ask for that. Right? When black people went out to vote, they would say, well, you know what? I sure hope Biden give us Juneteenth. Let me get in this line to vote. And they continue to say he needs to keep his margin over Trump is among black voters that near are where it has been for Democrats in the past elections. He also needs a strong turnout at a time when black participation has declined. I say Trump, meanwhile, has prioritized growing his share of support among black voters and his advisors argue that inflation and immigration are two issues that can help him do so. I will say that is true. And also the cost of living, the cost of living is horrible. And a lot of black people are really feeling the crunch and that's why they have an issue with Biden. Now they say, see black men is a particularly younger black men as a best opportunities for adding support. Uh, for Trump. Now I say assessments and say of the 2020 results very slightly say exit polls estimated that Trump won 12% of the black vote It's aware of the Pew research center analysis estimated that the former president won 8% of the black vote. Neither of those studies say nor analysis have shown any notable rise in Republican support for black Americans in presidential and midterm elections since 2016. Say before the civil rights movement in the 1960s, Republican presidential candidates routinely capture a significant minority of the black vote. Since the 60s, Republicans have seen their share drop Substantially. It said the low point for Republicans came during Barack Obama's two campaigns for president in 2008, 2012, where their share dropped to 5%. As they opposed to consider Obama elections atypical, however, given his unique and historic appeal to black voters as the nation's first black president, for whatever their reason, they say it would not be overly surprising for Trump to again win a roughly 11 to 13% of the black vote. They said they are highly skeptical, however, that the current polls showing support of 20% or more. Well, I think he probably could get that 20%. Anything more, anything higher than 20% will shock me, but I think he could get that 20% because there's a lot of black Americans that's very, very upset about their cost of living. Once again, the Democrats have and Biden in particular have not given the black community something. You gave him black tokenism, you gave him black symbolism, but you didn't give black substance. And when I say substance, that means the substance go to the majority of the black vote, right? Because Katanji Brown Jackson can't do nothing on the Supreme Court for black people, even if she wanted to. With Juneteenth, we talked about that earlier. So what has he done for black people specifically? 
Let's say a Christian Tyler, a political scientist at California State University of Sacramento, who oversees Black Voter Project, said it's a dubious that suddenly there's a magical shift in Trump's direction compared to 2016 and 2020. He said he don't see it. He said the big concern about the recent polls is that the sample size of black voters are frequently tiny and often no more than 100 or so, and thus to give a big margin of error. That political scientists and political strategists alike agree that samples of this size are less likely to be a fully representative of the black community and say that a large scale surveys of black Americans of which they are few are more reliable. Now I say have a Cornell Belcher. He say he's one of the Obama pollsters said that likelihood of Trump receiving a significant higher percentage of the black vote than any Republicans since 1960 is absurd. Now I'm just quoting what they're saying here. Cause we gonna get into why of course they're wrong. It's the ad is I've been doing large sample size polls of black voters for four years and never in those four years that Donald Trump received is say ever move above 10%. But see, Donald Trump don't have to receive a big, large chunk of the vote. Y'all problem is going to be the couch. The couch is going to be your problem. Trump getting a big percentage of the vote is not going to be your issue. You don't realize how many black people are saying they're going to choose the couch. And it's the black people that's going to say you're going to choose Trump. So between the, the, the couch and Trump, Democrats lose. Easy. It's an easy loss. And Biden keeps on doing things that make people upset. Just recently on Easter Sunday, he said by presidential proclamation that there was a trans day of visibility on Easter Sunday. You have a lot of Christians in general who hold Easter Sunday very dear to their hearts, Resurrection Sunday, correct? Well, you're going to say trans day of visibility. Then when he talks about Easter celebration, you're going to take a lot of that stuff away or the things people do for Easter celebration. So he made the Muslims upset with what's going on in Palestine. Now he has a lot of Christians upset, but behind Easter, well, they would never thought they'd see an American president say this. Now they claim that this has been going on every year and that it just fell on that day. Well, you know what? If you're smart, you can all, if it's just something that you do, you could have did it on the 30th. You could say, Hey, this year, the trans day of visibility going to be on the 30th, not the 31st. But no, he don't really have some good people around him. Obviously he already had that first scandal that happened at the white house. When you had the trans people, you know, exposing their breasts and all of that, he had that going on and he still didn't learn by now. Like what kind of people he got around him? Now they continue to say that the Belcher uh, individual say he in disbelief in is grounded not only in the voting patterns among black adults over a series of elections, but also Trump's history. He cited the former president's comments and his positions on issues at odds with attitudes of black Americans. Right now, I'm not even hearing people talk about that. When I talk to black people, they, they talking about the cost of living, the cost of living, the cost of living. You have black people talking about the migrant crisis, all of that. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about Biden. Oh man, I can't wait to go vote for Biden. I don't hear that. And I say Biden's approval rating and see among black Americans have declined over time. And it has among Americans overall. They say the Pew research have found that 6% of black adults approved of the way he was doing his job. And in January of this year, his approval stood at 48%. But Biden's favorable ratings among black adults and a measure less related to job performance have softened only slightly. They say between July 22 and February, his favor really moved from 65% to 61% uh, positive. They say in contrast, the president's favor rating among Hispanic adults dropped to 17 points. They say over the same time period. Now you would see that, you know, Biden has done, and the Democrats have done a lot for the Hispanic community. DACA is one. Um, now I know a lot of Hispanic Americans aren't approving of the migrant crisis either. They're not approving because um, they said that when they came over here, they had to just get a job and get it how they live. They didn't get to live in hotels, which is true. They didn't get to get a thousand dollar gift cards or debit cards, which is true. If you know the history of America, they didn't get that. They were just hoping they can just get a job and and, and build up their families. Like they build up their families. Right. Um, So they're taking a big major issue with Biden um, doing this. And some of them are saying, that, Hey, these people are making us look bad because they say, Hey, it's Latinos. And they say, Hey, it's not us. That's them. Right? So that's what, though so you still have some Latinos is not approving of Biden either. 
Now they continue to say they acknowledge they say that there are a few black political surrogates who can make the case for the former uh, president. They say other than they say Tim Scott. Now Tim Scott can't talk for you know, Trump was small. He get him away from him. Who also ran for president and got nobody wanted him. They say Trump is a, is a in his vice a potential vice president pick will say there are others in the black community outside of politics who would act as validators. Say Biden's advisors don't dispute that they have work to do to boost uh, Biden's standing among black voters, but they express confidence that they would get the job done. Now, Jasmine Harris, the director of black media for the Biden Harris campaign points to administrative accomplishments that have been important to the black voters, including a record low black unemployment and historic funding for historical black colleges and universities. That does not funding for HBCUs does not translate to funding for the black community. If you're a person that don't go to college, what about you? That's the problem. You can't tell the greater black community. I gave funding to the HBCUs and then the majority of America don't even go black America. Don't even go to the HBCUs. What about them? Well, I cancel student loans. What about the people who don't have student loans? What did you do for them? You didn't do a lot for black people. You did it for a couple maybe. And then it wasn't specifically for black people. That was for everybody. So you can't even say you did that. Now they continue saying November is that black voters will show up again. One once for Joe Biden and not for Donald Trump who simply worked to, to demean and degrade black Americans. That's what Harris said in the email message. She's going to be shocked. Vice president Harris is going to be shocked and she don't know the temperature in the room. Cause she don't talk to all black people. She only talked to black people that's going to just smile at her and not actually give her a true assessment of the black community. Now say Biden allies appear to worry less about the big shift to Trump among black voters than the overall level of black turnout in November. Say for example, black turnout in 2022 dropped by 10 percentage points when compared to 2018, uh, the midterms. And I say black Americans who infrequent voters were present a real challenge for Biden. So they can really, uh, they really can't find anything to get excited about. They say they still really, they say against Trump, but not excited in the way they would get them out to vote. He said Trump is danger. They say he's a racist. He said he, he's, but we're not sure if we want to get out to vote. He say for Biden, this is what they say. That's the big danger. Okay. So the name calling, I say, how is Trump more racist than Biden though? That, that's what I want to figure out. Remember that meeting he had with the civil rights people telling them about, about the Hispanics and they got to work with them and it's more of them than y'all and all that. Say, yeah, because we can't really keep compete when you open up the door to 7 million people and the majority of them is from Latin America. I mean, nobody can compete with that. No community can, right? You didn't want to do nothing for black people. But so many black people wanted to talk to you after you got elected. They didn't want to talk to them. Ice Cube said, Hey man, I want to talk to you about the black community. Ah, I talked to you after the election. Did he talk to Ice Cube? No, he did not. But Trump and them wanted to talk. Now they said they need black people to show up in Philadelphia, Detroit and Milwaukee. They said it'd be critical for Biden hopes of winning. They say uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, Michigan and Wisconsin respectively. They say if the elections will hold in the three states while losing Georgia, Nevada and Arizona, the other three main battlegrounds he will still win electoral college majority. Now they said turnout in Philadelphia has declined in three consecutive elections. The drop has been mostly evident in the heavily Hispanic districts, but also no in the black precincts. So Democrat strategists fear this could put the state at risk in November. They lost Pennsylvania alone with 19 electoral college votes could be crippling the Biden's chances given he could face this year in Georgia and Arizona. Now, Biden has an issue with many communities. Yes, the black, yes, Hispanic, the Muslim community, voter apathy. There's a lot of issues that's on that. And see, the thing is, they know this, but they keep lying and say, oh, we're going to put Obama out there. Man, nobody listen to Barack Obama, bro. You can send Barack Obama all day. You can send Michelle, send them. They don't move the needle for me. And most of black America, the reason why they don't move the needle because when Obama was in office for eight years, he had the opportunity to do what was right for the black community. And he did not do that. He did for everybody else. 
Remember, he was in charge and caused the issue in Libya. The so-called first black president is going to destabilize Libya. Now look at the chaos that's in Libya now. He tried to push the LGBT in Kenya. The Kenyan say, ah, 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 uh-uh. Nope. Don't bring that here. This is not our culture. That's y'all do that in America if you want, but we don't do that here. Right? Obama did a whole lot of things that was wrong. That's why nobody listens to him. Like, like he, he don't have, he could have been the greatest president ever, but, but he, he's not worried about it. He wasn't worried about it. So sending out Obama at this point, don't move the needle. So just don't even waste his time. Obama can need to go do his movies, his books and anything else that he want to do. Speaking engagements, fine, but nobody want to listen to him. He's a propagandist. He believes in censorship. He don't believe in freedom. Why well, won't listen to him? Look, I mean, like Biden's trying to do so many different things to make it harder for the American people. We can't go vote for that. At least I can't go vote for that. I can't. And maybe a lot of you can't vote for that, but I'm sorry. I can't. Or if you say, I feel I vote for the couch. Okay. Do that. Do that. But I can't do it. Mm -mm. No, no law. This, this, this. And listen, let me tell you something. I've talked to people in my family and a lot of people in my family, as much as I was all raised to be Democrats. Everyone I talked to in my family from the male and the female, all of them saying they're not voting for Biden. And I'm not talking about my family members are in the politics. Like I am, they're not, but there's, there it quoted to me, told me why they said they were, they're going to vote for Trump. And these are all black people I'm talking about. And none of them, none, they have never been one to be advocating for no Trump before. There was no career Republicans or nothing like that. These are people that have been in my family is all Democrat. And everybody I know in my family is saying they're going to vote for Trump because Biden has messed everything up and made life hard to live. That's really going to get people to vote for Trump. Is that the cost of living? People can't buy a freaking house. The prices of cars and shot, everything that shot up to uh, un, unholy, very, very unholy numbers on top of him padding millions of more people on top of that. When you pad all these X 7 million people in this country, that's, that's food prices are going to go up even more. Cause they say, Oh, we got to feel these people. Hey, we got to produce more. Or we gotta, you know what I'm saying? He, this man don't care that people can't afford to live. He don't care because he good. He getting his money from the corporations when he get out. When he get out, he will get a bag. I promise you, he will get in the bag. He will be fine. But the rest of you, you struggling. So why, why, why go vote for him? Nah, uh-uh. Nope. The black community, either going, a lot of them going to say, of course, you don't got some diehards that just don't, don't know no better. But the, the younger people, they either going to set it out or Trump. That's kind of what I'm hearing. I'm not hearing nothing for Biden. So no, it's nothing really Biden could do at this point to change that. Unless he figured out a way to a miraculously turn around the whole economy and the cost of living within a short amount of time period and get it back to what it was when Trump was in office, then Biden would maybe have a small chance, but no. And then he let in all these migrants in here. He can't get them all out of here if he wanted to before November. If he wanted a halfway a chance, he would, he would start sounding like Trump and getting them on out of here and making them Democrat city stop all the sanctuary and all that. If he was smart, but he's not going to do that. That's, that's not the Democrat way. So yeah, it's either going to be the, the couch or Trump, probably the couch a little more, but it's going to be either or. And, and I definitely see Democrats just, no, they, I don't see them women in November unless, unless, unless they, they pull a fast one. And you know, the fast one that they pulled last time.